I boosted my HRV by 12% in a little over a month using two very simple techniques. Let's explore them right now. We prioritize HRV. Having a higher HRV or heart rate variability is a good thing. One of the first things that I check every morning is my WHOOP recovery score and it's calculated using HRV. HRV stands for heart rate variability and it's the time in milliseconds between heartbeats. Long story short, the higher the HRV, so the higher the time in milliseconds between your heartbeats, the more adaptable your nervous system is. So higher is better. Some things like alcohol, lack of sleep, or even overtraining can lower your HRV in the long term. And it is strongly correlated with recovery. I managed to improve my HRV pretty significantly, and I'm gonna tell you how I did it, but there are a couple of steps to it. One of these steps is this little device here, but we'll get to that because you should start with something else. To have a good baseline HRV, you need to go to bed at the right time. For most people, that also means training in the mornings and not in the evenings, avoiding alcohol, avoiding, well, many other substances that can affect it, and just living a healthy, clean life. But there are some hacks. One hack that I noticed is that you can temporarily boost your HRV by breathing techniques. And one of those breathing techniques is actually built into the Apple Watch. So if you're tracking your HRV with the Apple Watch, it gives you an average of your entire day. And because you're doing stuff and moving around, the HRV is gonna be a little bit lower because it needs to account for some specific situations. Once you're in the state of deep, deep relaxation though, it can be the highest that it's ever been for you. In my case, it can reach up to 220 or 240 milliseconds. That's almost twice as high as Brian Johnson. So if you have an Apple Watch, get the mindfulness app and then launch the breathing exercise for at least three minutes. It can be longer. Once you do it consistently for a couple of weeks, you will see an improvement in your general HRV, which is usually measured by trackers like the Whoop but it's measured at night, so it doesn't take that high number into account at all. What that high number does, however, it trains your nervous system that a number like this is even possible. So that should be your starting point. But then, there is one other thing that I've been doing recently that has boosted my HRV from a baseline of 90 plus to almost 110. And this morning I woke up with HRV of 112 which is really high for my nighttime HRV. And it all starts with this little device. It's not a sponsored video, so I paid for this out of my own pocket. And there are different, also cheaper devices like this, so it's more about the general idea of what it does and how it does it. It all starts with stimulating the vagus nerve, which is the nerve starting in your brain and then going down into your stomach. It's called the rest and digest nerve because it's a two-way communication between the body and the brain that tells the body to relax. By zapping that nerve with a tiny bit of electricity, you stimulate it beyond what it does normally and it helps the body relax. In my case, it made some profound long-term changes and this is how it works. You have this little clip here that you clip onto your ear like this and then wrap it around the ear make sure it's secure and then on this device you turn it on and just leave it on i do two half an hour long sessions in the evenings and since i started doing it just check out the graph it speaks for itself other things that this is good for is anxiety depression treatment not sleeping enough or not being able to sleep or go to sleep and many many other things in my case i don't have any other issues and i just wanted to boost my hrv to have better recovery because i train quite a lot and i have an iron man coming in september for which i'm completely not ready so this is one of the things that i'm doing to maximize recovery. I'm trying to also add all of the other things. So I do that little breathing technique with the Apple Watch 
and I tried to eat clean and I tried to finish my meals by 5 p.m. So by the time I go to bed, my body is not digesting as much anymore because that can also influence HRV. I try to keep a consistent bedtime schedule. It's not always as easy and I don't drink alcohol. So that part is way easier. But this little thing, it just adds a little bit more to that. It's definitely not for everyone. You should consult your doctor and if you have any heart issues or pacemaker, it's definitely not for you. But it does work. And for me, it worked perfectly. HRV is steadily improving and increasing as planned. And I hope to get it to about 120 almost every night and keep it there. I don't need to go much higher because the number itself isn't really that important. It's your baseline number. So it differs between people and some elite athletes have much, much higher nighttime HRV. It's all about getting to the right spot for you. And for me, I just feel it's around 120. I'm at 112 this morning and an average of 98 or 97, but it's steadily growing. So I hope to get there very, very soon. Subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop of my experiments with longevity, biohacking, fitness, wellness, and all of the other things that led to me being in the best shape of my life right now at 42. And fingers crossed that I'm gonna even attempt that Iron Man. For now, I don't feel ready, but we'll see, we'll see. Have a beautiful day.